There's no denying that Mr. Beast is probably the most influential and most recognizable YouTuber at this point. He's like YouTube's golden child in terms of being nice to people, doing good things, and generating a shit ton of cash. Like genuinely, I believe if YouTube were to sit down and choose any YouTuber to represent the platform, it would be Mr. Beast. Now, yes, I know I'm not the first person to talk about these allegations, which we will go over uh, kind of in a little bit of detail, but more so I want to talk about how how Mr. Beast will never be canceled. But to do that, we have to talk a little bit more about why Mr. Beast is how Mr. Beast is. Mr. Beast, and I don't think anyone can argue this, is not a YouTuber. I think Jacksepticeye was perfectly right when he said this. <laughs> do you like Mr. Beast? No. Oh, Jack. Oh! Do you think Mr. Beast ruined YouTube? Yes. Now, in all honesty, Jack, why? Because it became more about views, money, and popularity than it did about having fun. This person who started out, yes, as somebody who was just making videos, you know, somebody with a vision, who, who had an idea, took a camera, and made that idea come to life. But that is that is not what Mr. Beast is. Mr. Beast is a corporate entity. Mr. Beast is big enough to buy any YouTube channel he wants just to delete it. A while ago, I mentioned in a video that I personally don't like Mr. Beast because of this reason and because he is literally just a game show at this point and he'll eventually turn into a whole show and a whole brand which yes they are being picked up by amazon to become a even bigger show now we can't talk about mr beast and his accolades without talking about the good he's done obviously you know you can think of like building wells in places or curing diseases now yes there is the point of every time he does these great things there's always a camera and a crew involved it's not just like he does these good things and that's it well in defense of mr beast that's only partially true because his team does a lot of the mr beast philanthropy stuff behind the scene like even when cameras aren't always rolling, they're still processing, you know, food drives and stuff like that, which is really cool. However, despite these positive things, whether he's doing it for clout or or just doing it to be a kind person, there is a lot of weird things about Mr. Beast and his content. Mr. Beast fakes his videos in ways that are worse than you realize. Uh, I say that because he's been exposed for faking videos before and the common response is, why does it matter if the videos are fake? They're just meant to be entertainment. A large part of Mr. B's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. Oh like, yeah, it's a huge so, problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. But also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, cause what we do is not scripted. So you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, and that's your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. Like, I don't think it would take anyone over the age of 12 years old to know that some of these videos are fake. For example, I think the first video that I saw that I've really, I guess, kind of knew that these videos were fake was the chocolate factory giveaway where Mr. Beast sends out these random, you know, tickets in his feastable bars. That's good. These 10 contestants are all here because they found a golden ticket when they bought one of our feastable bars. I just bought $1,000 worth of Mr. Beast chocolate. chocolate and just so happens that the person that wins you know the whole chocolate factory is a youtuber an up-and-coming youtuber it's just the whole video if you go back and watch it it just it doesn't seem real like everything the guy is presented with that ends up winning just seems in his favor never seen so much money in my life will you buy this off of me yes for half a million dollars of course right here this is mine if you hand me this you can put this money in your car I officially hand it to you okay well yes! there you go this is mine yes. oh my god 
But I mean, this wouldn't be the first time or the last time that a YouTuber has faked videos so that they come out better. And sure, if you want to say that it's just entertainment, so why does it matter if it's fake? Well, that's fine. But Mr. Beast, one of the one of the first allegations we'll talk about is that he's using these giveaways and stuff to do things like sell merch when he's been shown that the quote unquote fake lotteries he's doing are illegitimate and actually illegal. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their car, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their Someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets two, thousand dollars good luck everybody so this was a six hour live stream uh they took it down off youtube but five hours of it are still up on their facebook page uh, and during those five hours i counted 46 illegal lotteries there's also proof about somebody signing the merch making it look like mr beast when it's not mr beast's collectible merch at all which is pretty cringe uh, it does say this limited t signed by mr beast and crew uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the mr beast crew and it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature. Even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Oh. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. This is so cool. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Now you may have seen the person talking pop up a couple times already, and that is Dogpack404. And why Dogpack is so important is because Dogpack worked for Mr. Beast. Now of course Dogpack can give us some much needed insight on things that we didn't know about this whole ass company that is now Mr. Beast. And Dogpack does something actually interesting. He brings on another former employee of Mr. Beast named Jake Weddle to kind of expose some innards of being in one of Mr. Beast videos. If you're going to do something nice for somebody and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, it you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You, there was a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image and you gave one guy $10,000 who needed it to eat and now the revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave. It got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like a uh, ten thousand dollars every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was just, it was like one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, "What? You shouldn't do that." And if people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me, and it, uh, it didn't go well. It got to a point where like they weren't they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, "Can we like have like nighttime hours?" You know, and they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what, me sleeping or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a like, oh, you're going to get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great. Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clocks. So you didn't know what time it was. 
Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we gotta stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? They pretend to make it genuine. I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You just be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. And I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days, I'm not doing so hot, you know? Which, if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera, but it, it, was, it was too real. If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in a year. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're going to, you're going to run a marathon. You're going to do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. There was so much pressure to just do it. Just do the thing, you know, you, then you get up. And I, if, if I refuse, it's just. Oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I start running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. When I got off the treadmill. Ah, oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like you wouldn't believe. Just all over, just these big red. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My my, my muscles were like just the, the lactic acid. I, I I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I mean, that's when um. Yeah, uh, get psych in and talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well. Like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work and uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I don't love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically like at least seven more days I, no no and they didn't let me leave right away either they wanted to make sure you know everything was fine so i just you know slept for a while they turned the lights off <laughs> and uh, they, they brought it's like they brought in all my friends you know to make it a They brought around people I liked and Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. He was sitting in the chair turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. He turns around, he stands up. He, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's, um, he's like, oh, stop, you're going to make me cry. 
and he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not, he's just, I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. But all that stuff started coming out. And the potentiality as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me, and if you're gonna make fun of my dad, I don't care what happens to me or my career and reputation after this, I had, to, I had to say some stuff. So, whatever happens, happens at this point. Now, I don't think Jake Weddle is at all exaggerating here because like he mentions, he has nothing to gain. He only has reputation to lose and connection to lose within Mr. Beast. Now, these are some very extreme allegations. And I guess on a technicality, some people saying that, yes, he could leave at any time. He's not being held there against his will can be true, but it's shown that people literally kill for money. People literally do the most heinous shit. Look at all the people that are in prison right now for robbing stores and banks because of how badly they needed money. So I think some quote unquote wholesome YouTuber saying, oh, he needs to stay up all night with the lights on and run a marathon. Yeah, I would probably do that for a fraction of the money that Jake Weddle made from this video. And I'm not discrediting Jake at all. I'm sure it was terribly difficult, but I'm just saying there's a lot of people that would do a lot worse for an even lesser amount of money. Of course, of course. Yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. So, okay, we have some pretty big three allegations just to start with. That somebody else could be fake, he's doing fake giveaways and fake lotteries, and that there is some shocking abuse or, at the very least, neglect within the filming of a Mr. Beast video. Now, and of course, you've heard of the allegations with Chris Tyson talking inappropriately with minors, and there was some seeming evidence of s at least an extent of grooming going on. But surely, with a company devoted to making brain rot content for children, this wouldn't leak into the company, right? Well, of course it did. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender and that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender with a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose, or...? <laughs> Now, uh, back when Dr. Disrespect was getting exposed, before even Chris Tyson was getting exposed, Jake the Viking, who was a star on The Old Mr. Beast, came out and kind of showed his support against the transgender movement and Chris Tyson alongside Nick Merckx. Now, when this happened, there was a little bit of drama floating where Chris Tyson was talking about, well, if you really want to keep the kids safe, let's talk about your uncle, who did some very terrible things to children. Well, it turns out that that same uncle that was mentioned actually worked for Mr. Beast. And they even let him stay there and gave him a code name, Delaware, and had him wear a mask so that people could not recognize him and, you know, tie him to any registries or public databases. What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do, you, why do you call him Delaware? And I, didn't, I didn't know. Apparently, they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy knew about it? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. That is right. This is no exaggeration. I don't even have to say allegation because it's just the truth. Mr. Beast had a convicted sex offender working for his company. That same company 
that conducted videos with children and women that were alone. So Jake, if you really cared about keeping the children safe, why did you allow a literal registered sex offender to work undercover for Mr. Beast? And I know I could have went way more in depth with these allegations, but that's not the entire focus of the video. I mean, if you really want to break them down quick, we have the top five allegations against Mr. Beast, which number one, obviously the less of them is faking videos. Number two, being hosting lotteries or giveaways that are feasibly unwinnable or rigged. Number three, keeping Chris Tyson your best friend around, even knowing at the time he was talking to underage people in a pretty suggestive manner. Number four, having very unsafe and unsavory tactics when recording videos. Number five, having a predator amongst your staff for many years and even going so far as to keep them hidden and secret. So those are the big allegations against Mr. Beast and I'm brushing over them because for this video I specifically want to focus on the fact that Mr. Beast will not be canceled from this and yes I know I sound like a cringy drama channel when I say oh he's not gonna get canceled or we should cancel him but genuinely the brand deals will not stop the money that that is produced from Mr. Beast the videos the content the giant brand that is Mr. Beast will probably suffer no change from this this isn't like somebody we've recently talked about on the channel like Dr. Disrespect or Cody Ko, who while they have a lot of resources is just an independent YouTuber. But Mr. Beast is an entire company at this point. Not only do I think that Mr. Beast is so big and it's like the $1 lawyer versus the $100 million lawyer challenge, you know, that, that people keep making memes about. I think that Mr. Beast, and when I say that, I don't mean Jimmy, I mean the company is so big and so powerful that they don't even have to address these allegations. I mean, think about companies like Sheen or Amazon that, you you know, people have proof of basic slave labor and things like sweatshops, but the company themselves are so massive and they have so many resources that there's just nothing that the public opinion can affect. For example, Mr. Beast's most recent upload, Survive 100 Days in Nuclear Bunker, went $500,000. Yes, the dislike ratio is much higher than his other videos, but his views are fine. At the time of recording, just under 150 million views and a whole team that has been shown to be deleting comments and what looks to be adding bot comments allegedly and realistically all they have to keep doing is rinse and repeating this cycle of deleting comments adding bot comments until eventually the commentary youtube space and and the drama youtube space kind of just lets this go because the internet is very fast and i genuinely i just i just don't know anyone that looks at mr beast himself and thinks of him as just this regular youtuber this is a company this is somebody with lawyers on lawyers and and people that could silence my channel or even huge commentary channels if they wanted to. In fact, Mr. Beast already has talked to Dogpack404 and talked about sending cease and desists and getting lawyers involved, which if we go back to, you know, the days of H3H3, creators trying to silence other creators' opinions was very shunned on the platform, but for some reason, because it's this giant conglomerate company, it's okay for Mr. Beast to do it? Genuinely, these are my predictions. But just real quick before I tell you that, if you could go down there, hit the subscribe button. I want to hit 5k by the end of the year. Thank you very much. One, Mr. Beast will not respond. He will not make a public statement. He will not make a video. It, they will just keep out pumping their brain rock content like they have been. Two, the internet will forget. We move very fast. We'll latch onto the next big thing of drama that comes up or even bigger allegations will come up, which I mean, the cycle will still kind of continue from those allegations. And three, the big videos like Dogpack 404's videos and Jake Weddle's videos will probably get taken down through some kind of mysterious YouTube circumstances that don't fit with guidelines. Because you got to think about this, Mr. Beast and YouTube are best friends because Mr. Beast was basically designed to be perfect for the YouTube algorithm. Safe for kids, but not just for kids, so it can be pushed to all advertisers. It makes YouTube the 50-50 split of a lot of goddamn money, and he can put basically any sponsor he wants in the video because, again, his content's so safe. The way YouTube works by pushing out videos that people like to see because of the algorithm is exactly what made Mr. Beast's content. As we talked in the beginning about that person with a camera who just loved to make content, to now now, the reason the content is so different now is because that's what YouTube wants. They want the flashy stuff, the constant editing, the stuff that really draws in attention in such a malicious way. And by all metrics, it's proven because
because Mr. Beast has won YouTube. So there will be no way YouTube will ever remove Mr. Beast's channel or ever remove any of Mr. Beast's content because they love his channel too much. And in terms of making money, Mr. Beast will always be their cash cow. So my prediction, I give this until the end of 2024 and Mr. Beast will sweep this all under the rug. However, from this point on, I know I rushed through the allegations and stuff in this video. That's just because bigger spaces like Pegasus, who's made <laughs> the absolute milking session out of this, which good for him. It's just been talked about too many times. But if there are any new allegations, they will be covered on this channel because I don't know, as sadistic as it is, it would be kind of interesting to see a giant YouTuber like that tumble over. So be sure to hit the subscribe button for that. That's going to be all for me for today. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.